What's going on, Celtics Nation? Welcome to the Clover Disclosure, the new YouTube show, keeping you up to date with the Boston Celtics. I'm your host, Adam Taylor. If you've never come across me before, that's fine. You can find me over at celticsblog.com, and we're hosting their podcast at Celtics Blog in any of your podcast feeds. Now, for the first few shows, what we're going to do is be diving into possible point guards available during free agency for the Celtics. Before we get into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of these upcoming videos. Jumping straight into it, today we're going to start off with Mr. Patty Mills, who Ime Udoka worked with during his time in San Antonio. Patty Mills is on the older side of things, but is going to be an unrestricted free agent this year. If you look here, he's just finishing off the last year of his deal, and we'll hit that unrestricted free agency. Now, the first thing we need to know when talking about the Boston Celtics and any possible free agent signings is, has their cap space looking? We know that they moved Kemba Walker in a trade to Oklahoma to get Al Horford and Moses Brown. Some second round pick swaps happened as well, but that doesn't really tell us where their money is. So right now, realistically, targets that the Boston Celtics are looking to acquire via free agency are most likely going to be around that taxpayer mid-level exception. Now, I'm no cap expert, and I do not claim to be. There's two options for you here. You can go check over Keith Smith at the NBA Front Office Show on YouTube, or there's a podcast which I'll link into the bio of this video that will basically break down all of your cap questions for the Celtics, and that was between myself and Mr. Keith Smith. But for the premise of this video, we're going to be looking at play players that sit around that tax level MLA, taxpayer MLA, and Patty Mills fills that role. So where do we want to go from here? What is it we're hoping Patty Mills can bring other than veteran leadership? We know that he's had years and years under Coach Pop. He's got experience in Australian international team. He's a decent floor spacer and that relationship with Udoka helps. He would definitely be fine coming off the bench, which means you could still run Marcus Smart as your starting guard. But the only downside really is you're not adding that size that you are hoping to add. One of the biggest knocks on Kemba Walker once we moved past his injury was the fact that he was quite small. And it was a similar issue with Kyrie Irving. He didn't have the size that everybody wanted in Boston. And then he can go as far back as Isaiah Thomas. Brad Stevens did a great job of hiding Isaiah. He managed to be, um, develop Kyrie into a respectable defender, but Kemba Walker was the target of multiple playoff offenses, most notably Toronto, and there are concerns that maybe Patty Mills will be there too. Now, when watching the tape, one of my biggest concerns about Patty Mills is his ability to navigate screens. I feel like he gets caught up on them quite a lot, uh, especially secondary screens. If we watch this video here... Spurs can be aggressive. They have a foul to give. Here's Burks from... Did you see how he got caught up on that secondary screen? He, he navigated the first one, and it was quite okay. Coming back, that um, Noel resets a secondary screen, and now all of a sudden, Patty Mills is taken out of the game. Now, this happened a bunch, right, that New York game. If you want to go back and watch it, you can see um, Taj Gibson takes him out of a few possessions. Nolan's Noel does similar. But it was, a f like, it was a factor all year. It wasn't just the Knicks that managed to take Patty Mills out of defensive possessions with secondary screens. Every team knew it and every team did it. And one of the big problems is when you're playing a switch everything system, if somebody gets caught up on one of these screens, well, now you're playing a four on five and you're really going to have to fly around. And that's where defensive breakdowns happen. Maybe you're late to a veer back situation where the guard is having to switch with a big and try and get underneath a rolling big man. So there are going to be issues there that me personally, I would be a little bit concerned about. Obviously, with Patty Mills' age, He's not getting any younger. His athleticism starting to wane. His speed just isn't what it used to be. And it's not just secondary screens either. Unreal, if we watch... Jones backs it out. 10 on the shot clock. Terrence Davis. Spin. Three. Got it. He went over the first screen, perfectly fine. Went under the second one against a known shooter. Screen navigation just seems to be a bit of an issue for Mills, and it probably has been throughout most of his career. Granted, I haven't watched him that closely. I, I cover the Celtics. They play in the East. Spurs are in the West. I see them maybe 
eight times a year, two for the times to play Boston, and then a few times where I'm just interested to see what's going on. But that screen navigation does become an issue for me, especially because that's one of the easiest ways to hunt an undersized point guard. So I am a little bit worried there, but he does bring a lot of offensive goodness, some of that nice, juicy goodness that you really want from a point guard. He's got the floor spacing. He's got the movement shooting. He's never been the best offensive creator, as in creating offensive looks for others. But he has always been quite a reliable three-point shooter. League average for most of his career, but he is nice from the corners. We, I've managed to pull this for you just to give you a little bit of a feeling. So this is his shooting accuracy. And what I want you to look at is the non-corner threes, averaging 34%, 41%, 39%, 40%. He's always hovered above or just around that league average. And then, you know, if we want to take his career from three, we could say, let's summarize it at a 39% career three-point shooter. That's not terrible. Now, playing under Coach Pop, you would expect him to have a decent mid-range game, and we can see that is the case. Average, um, you know, in his second year in the league, he was 94th percentile. Last season, he was in the 66th percentile for mid-range shots. It was one of Patty Mills' worst seasons around the rim and in that short mid-range area, and maybe that's because of uh, lack of athleticism, age setting in, or maybe it was just because Coach Pop has started to move into a different type of system now that they're relying on DeRozan and now you're running a lot through Jakob Pertl. Again, I haven't watched enough Spurs to know, but what we do know is Patty Mills is going to come in and give you a little bit of rim pressure and a lot of movement scoring and spot up shooting. And that's exactly what you need around guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. You need guys that are consistent and reliable from deep. And Patty Mills is going to give you that. Now, when I say movement shooting, there's lots of different ways we could be looking at this, right? Maybe he's coming off a pin down. Maybe you're having him off a handoff. Maybe you're just going to hit him as he's relocating from free. So many different scenarios. I've pulled a couple of videos just to give you an insight to what I'm excited about if Patty Mills was the option that Brad Stevens and Emi Udoka decided would be the best fit for this team for at least this season. So the first one we're going to look at is a Spain pick and roll. But you'll see if you watch closely, you will see that Patty Mills actually flares off the screen. So I'd like to call this like a Spain flare pick and roll. I, I missed him. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I miss Coach Pop. Been a minute. Start of the second quarter. Patty Mills starting it on. That ability to move, the ability to flare off of that pick and roll after setting the back screen and just shoot in motion, that is something that the Celtics were hoping they would get from Kemba Walker. Now, obviously, with Kemba's knee issues, always being injured, not really having a rhythm due to missing back-to-backs, a lot of those hopes and dreams of that movement shooting kind of fell flat. We saw him peel off pick and rolls as the ball handler and pull up, and we saw success there. But we didn't really see the off-ball Kemba Walker that was spoke about when he first signed for Boston. And because of that, we were kind of disappointed. So having somebody like Patty Mills that doesn't need the usage rates of Kemba, but is still going to be successful in that movement scoring role is going to be excellent. Now, another option we've got here is the team as a whole and the NBA as a whole generally like to run what you call a Chicago set, which is where you have a pin down for a shooter in the corner who then lifts and curls off that pin down into a dribble handoff from the big man. You'll see every team in the NBA run this, but what you hope for is that the three point shooter that's curling off the pin down is a respectable three point shooter. If you run this with a guy that's not a great three point shooter, let's say you run it with Romeo Langford that hasn't shown that three point like now so he isn't that three point killer right now then you're not going to feel good about this now i will say with a chicago set it doesn't have to be a pull-up free maybe if you want to get those open frees you will run some pitch or pistol some pistol pitch some pistol give and go but you can really run the chicago set to get that open free however its primary point of call is to get the ball handler that receives the dribble handoff an opportunity to drive middle. And that's good for us because as we saw a moment ago, Patty Mills is fine in the mid-range. If you want him driving middle and pulling up around the mid-range, fine. If he gets aligned to the basket, we can feel confident there too. But we can also feel confident when he's taking a three-point shot like this. Malik. Yeah, put pressure on the D, Malik. Look at the score. The Spurs know that. That time he gave it up. Veteran Mills. This guy is Money, right? I mean, curls off the pin down, gets the ball, just rises up and hits that hits that free. 
Part of me feels guilty now because I really could have found one where he drove and let off a floater or finished around the rim. But a Chicago set is usually to get somebody to drive middle. If the free is there, take it. Great. This is what the Celtics really need is another guard that can score from deep. They've got that in Peyton Pritchard, but bringing someone in that knows Udoka, knows Udoka's ways, understands that he's going to be a secondary option from the jump and gives you that veteran leadership. Well, I think Pritchard playing as a third string point guard there makes more sense. I understand it. And it's also cost effective at roughly 5.5 million a year. Now, the last option we've got here with movement shooting is just relocating and shooting off the catch. And again, veteran on veteran, gay on Biapo. We give to Patty Mills. Little give and go with the high post and then just a nice, easy jumper from the corners. This is the type of high level veteran playmaking that you're hoping to see from Patty Mills. He's never going to be the guy that gives you high assist numbers. What he will do is be able to create his own looks like that. Nice little give and go into the post, create a bit of space with his burst, a change of pace, and then boom, just hit that open lane. And this is what you want, and this is what the Celtics need. Now, we've seen that his scoring accuracy is respectable. We know that his contract is achievable. We know he's giving you the movement shooting that you need. We know that his defense is going to be a target. What we don't know is how do his assist numbers look for his career? What can we expect for him from from him? Sorry, in a playmaking standpoint, well, I've done the work for you, so let's have a look. We've got the assist numbers. He's averaging two point three assists on his career. Is that great? Not really, especially. But what we need to look at is he's hardly ever started a game. Over 739 games played in the league, he's only been a starter 57 times. This is a guy that has primarily played with San Antonio's second team, or he's came in alongside Tim Duncan. Maybe he's played off of Tony Parker in the day. You know, then nowadays it's playing off of DeMar DeRozan or Jakob Pertl. Or he's playing number two alongside Jav um, Javante Murray. There's going to be reasons why those assist numbers aren't high, but he doesn't project as a high-level offensive creator for others. And that's something to note. But when you're trying to develop Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and possibly Romeo Langford with that second unit as point, point forwards, essentially, as playmaking creators, offensive creators, you don't need Patty Mills to do that. What you need Patty Mills to do is score consistently lead consistently and make good decisions with the basketball when it's in his hands. This is going to be the first of these videos. There are about five uh, point guards that I think are accessible, available. But one more thing before we go. One of the biggest things that the Celtics didn't do this year was penetrate. I'm a big fan of penetration offense. Off the dribble, off the drive, off a cut, off a catch. I want guys peeling off and attacking the seams, attacking the angles, coming off the baseline, running L cuts, running V cuts, V cuts, whatever you want it to be. There's so many different ways to attack those lanes and force a rotation. And the Celtics basically accepted a stagnant five-out offense. One guy going ISO, four guys spotting up, the occasional, like, Blase, la di da, down the baseline. Nothing really to force a defense to rotate. So before we go, the last thing I wanted to do was take a quick look at how Patty Mills fares up in terms of drive numbers. How many times per game does he drive into the lane? How much pressure is he putting on that rim? We've seen that he's got a decent accuracy around the rim, but how much pressure is he actually putting on? Where is the defense going to be forced to rotate, to collapse, to help? So let's just take one look at that, and then we can all get on with our day. Okay, so if you can't see this, it's 3.3 drives per game is what Patty Mills averaged this season. Off those 3.3 drives, he shot 47.3% and drew what? 0.2 free throws per game. So every five games, every 10 games, you were getting two free throw shots. What I am encouraged by is he passed out of those drives on more than 50% of the time. They didn't convert into assists, but what that does mean is we can expect if Mills makes three drives or, say, four for easy sake, two of those times he's dishing the ruck, his dribble drive penetration, and then relocating that ball to a guy that can attack off a rip DHO or a rip, a rip through off the catch. But he's going to facilitate enough. It might not convert into assists. Maybe it's a hockey assist. 
maybe it's just enough to force a defensive rotation that opens the seams up for somebody like Rob Williams to get down low by the dunker spot and finish off a nice lob pass. It doesn't have to end up on the scoreboard to be effective or to be useful. And I'm hoping that by playing so long under Coach Popovich, that's the type of mentality Patty Mills would bring to the Celtics. Now, do I think he's likely to come? I think he's one of the more likely guard candidates that would be available, that's attainable, that would also have a reason to want to be in Boston. He may just choose to stay in San Antonio. Maybe he chooses to go play in Australia. Or maybe there's another team that we we haven't thought of, especially me, because I'm so focused on who could fit Boston, that could turn up to be a challenger to Patty Mills' signature in this offseason. But for now, I'm going to leave you with this. I'll be back in the next day or so with looking at Ricky Rubio. And now we can dive more into that at the time. Obviously, the contract's quite high. But for now, if you've enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button and share this with your friends. Again, I will leave the podcast link about the Celtics cap situation in the bio.